Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I um, always disliked when uh, people just um, take things as, you know, okay, well, that's the way it is. We're going to continue uh, uh, doing the same because that's the way we did it so far without changing it, accepting the status quo, even though the status quo is bad or in, it's faulty and you can improve it. They say, well, that's the way we did it. We just do it that way. And people accept that. Instead of saying, no, we found there's a problem. We need to change that. We don't stay and accept the status quo, especially if we know the reality and how we can fix it. This happened in Romania many, many times when I was uh, living over there. People were accepting certain uh, behavior as being, well, what can you do? That happens. And that means we should, do, should not do anything about it, like, for instance, corruption. Well, that's corruption, yeah. Well, how about changing that? How about fighting that? How about eradicating that? Uh, it's, you're not going to be able to uh, solve that problem. Don't even try then. So I have here an, art, an article, a video of an interview conducted by Tucker Carson with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. at Tucker's house or whatever he's got his little shack now and uh, he's asking um, Tucker is asking uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. some questions and one of them that I'm going to feature here is about um, why do you think why do you think the mass media is um, is against you why do you think uh, you know uh, like a you know they're all mischaracterizing you or why are they against you and here's going to be uh, Robert F. Kennedy's answer in this video, it's about maybe a minute. I mean, the whole video is one, it's one hour and 20 minutes. And I'm going to play one minute regarding this issue. And you're going to see what Robert F. Kennedy has to say about it. Remember, he's telling us something that a lot of you might say, yeah, we know. Okay. My question, why don't we do anything about it? Why do we accept this status quo? Well, you're not going to change it. What does that mean? What does that mean? So let me show you this. I picked, up, picked this up from Twitter. Okay, so uh, Tucker already asked him a question and he's going to go and say, well, I don't know why these guys uh, are against me with this and that, but, and he's going to come and tell us certain things that we know and I'm going to discuss it after the video is played. Um, I'm kind of, I'm shocked, even though, you know, I've been, uh, I'd say maligned, for many years because the stuff that I was doing with vaccines, the kind of the uniformity of the, the vitriol against me and the mainstream media and the dishonesty of it, that, you know, virtually every article contained... It doesn't mean that we have to believe him, but I th is it virtu virtually any going to find... Uh, not just outright, not just mischaracterizations, but also just outright lies, things that any fact checker could look up and determine were not true. Now, uh, ignore every, all, all these things, okay? Uh, ignore that, uh, bringing it to an extreme, the whole thing. I don't, I don't think everybody's lying, I don't think everybody's mischaracterizing him, but that's beyond the point. Um, and they all are doing it, whether all it's doing Vanity it. Fair or whether it's the Atlantic Monthly or Washington Post, Boston Globe. Um, uh, there's just, there's virtually no exception. Uh, what do you I, think your, your crime is? I think part of it is that there's been, and, I, and again, I don't know, I can't explain it. Somebody else, I know somebody will explain it in a way at one point where I'll go, ah, that makes sense. But right now, what it seems to me is that... Oh, this is important here. There's been this alignment, this political alignment that I think really started with Fox News back, you know, when Roger was running things there, where he, he overtly made it a political network. He yes. aligned it with the Republican Party. And Ignore said, this. Push their agenda. Like, oh, it's this, but... And up until then, that has considered, been considered a journalistic ethical breach. You know, the, the, the networks were, were supposed to at least pretend neutrality and, uh, and the newspapers as well. But um, now I think that business model works so well for Fox. And, and again, that I think MSNBC and CNN adopted the same uh, business model and then there's been this big consolidation in the media where there really is no independent media you have every newspaper did you hear there is no independent media 
and listen to what he equates it to. Every, every radio station, every TV station, um, almost all the billboards, most of the large internet content providers that are now owned by five companies. You know, five that was illegal under the 1928 Communication of the Radio Act. But um, today, it's been, uh, that has been what's happened. We've had this big consolidation, and I think the profit models for Wall Street, which now, you know, is BlackRock. And now he's jumping to something else. So, did you hear? So, if this guy is saying, uh, makes these claims, and between you and I, he's not an, how should I put it, a, a really an outsider. Because he's from the Kennedy family, and believe me, uh, and if you don't, you should know already, these guys meet as a family, or they have connections, they are very well connected, they have access to information behind the scenes, behind the curtain that we don't have. We might only, you know, guess they are like that, you know, oh, I think that uh, makes sense. So if he says that, which uh, for me that was a, I don't know, at least 25 years uh, uh, knowledge, I knew that for at least 25 years. Why? Just look who owns what conglomerates are over there and how many media companies are over there and who owns what. Um, well, I remember that my eyes were really opened by a guy that I can't mention his name here, but that, I mean, was, uh, he came with evidence. And this guy, I think it was in about um, 2000 or 2000, I think the year 2000, 2001 maybe, when this guy, an American, uh, he's dead now. His uh, um, first name is... Um, William. All right, that's all you need to know about it, about this guy. And he died, nevertheless. So uh, this gentleman uh, came and said, well, these are the owners then, in the 1990s, of these companies. And these are connected with that. So if this guy comes and says that, all right, remember when it was, I'm not going to go actually to that one. This was a different, I was uh, about to bring someone else in the conversation, but I will not. Because he was talking about something else and then we get in trouble with another group and we don't want to touch that group here yet. Okay, so what should we do about it? Why do we continue? Why do we continue to play this? Uh, you give me the news and I ingurgitate that news and then I will change my opinion and I'm going to go and vote the way the news was provided to me. We know. I mean, you just you have to look around. You have to listen to them. And again, this is not an outsider. He's not the only one saying that. Tucker doesn't counter him, doesn't say, hey, that's not true. Um, why is that? My point here is people follow or do not challenge the status quo with this. Well, I had uh, uh, one person in particular who used this argument. Well, yes, I know the, those guys are over there. That group is in charge of that. But if that group would not be that group, it would be another group. That was the, this person's argument. That, what do you want, Emil? That would be, uh, if the uh, group A will not be in charge, it will be group B. My point is, there's not going to be a group A or group B being in charge. Diversity is our strength, remember? So, uh, the, but the, the worldview of this person in particular, I met many examples of people who came with this kind of argument, well, that's, we always, uh, always did this uh, without thinking, well, is it right? Why do we accept it? It was like another example, it was, uh, well, you know, um, before I had, uh, not I had, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't ident identify as one. So anyway, before my first childbirth, uh, I went just like uh, uh, to learn, I went uh, with my wife, here, United States of America, right, to uh, some courses, classes, I don't know how, pre, not, mm, I don't know how, how they're called. You go before and they teach you, you know, future uh, parents how to behave, what the, the kids and all that. And we were, I don't know how many, uh, about uh, 20 families about. I know we went, it was uh, sponsored by a hospital. So we went to the hospital, they were medical and so on. So at one point, they were talking about uh, med uh, the, um, uh, the leave, the, how do you call it, the, um, after you, I can't find freaking the term, after you give birth is called whatever leave, I can freaking remember. So anyway, I was very at, at point with that, I knew uh, what are in the other industrialized countries, how many 
months, how many years you uh, can stay home and, uh, you know, um, take care of your of newborn. Maternity leave, Jesus Christ. Anyway, whew, it was hard. Not, <laughs> and the uh, uh, United States doesn't have something like this. I think it has like a few weeks or something. So I raised the question. I asked, um, why is that? My American counterparts, my fellow Americans. And uh, who would agree I said to be like, I don't know, let's say the Nordic states in the Europe where they have a year or two years, 80% paid leave and all that. And most of them were, yeah, well, we can. And some of them came with this argument. No, this is the greatest country in the world. We always did it that way. We should stay with that. that. I said, yeah, but you will not stay with your kid. Someone else, a stranger will raise your kid. And said, so, well, I have a career. A woman told me that. I have a career. Yeah, but you have a child, which is more, you know, your career child. And it doesn't have to be uh, the woman staying home. The guy can stay home if she doesn't, you know, uh, breastfeeds. But the idea that we always did it and it's great. Like, for instance, why do we have only two parties? Two party system here. Two. But we like diversity and we like uh, capitalism and uh, opportunity. As many opportunities. But here, somehow, we have two. Nobody prevents you from having, I don't know, what kind of party here and there. But we know how it works. And it's been like this from what? From the inception. Two. That's it. A and B. And everybody's okay with that. Not everybody's okay, but it's not like they push what's going on here. Maybe it's the third option, the fourth option. No. Somehow those uh, third or four, fourth option doesn't catch uh, a grip on this. Somehow. For what? For, from the inception. 200 years or whatever. Uh, and more. So how is it possible? The same here. We are the mass media. Yeah, they do this. Yeah, like we take it for granted. No, no. But hey, and it bothers me because there are people with money, a lot of money that could possibly could prevent or not prevent, offer an alternative like Musk. But Musk for me is murky because I don't know why Musk, the only guy, is allowed to do certain things that others are not. And I'm not talking about because he's got money. He can knock on his door and say he's watching uh, this kind of uh, this and that, you know, or doing these kind of things and we're never going to hear from Musk again. Guantanamo will have him forever, you know, but somehow he's allowed to have uh, those in space, provide space link, Kapalika link, Supulika. Uh, I am, well, I, I'm, I'm skeptical that he is, uh, oh my God, I'm free. I don't think so. I think he's, uh, you know, I can't say more. But it's very uh, skeptic. I'm, I'm skeptical that he's. Uh, I would like it to be that way, where freedom of speech is, and he is the promoter. He's good what he's doing, fantastic uh, regarding uh, Twitter or X. But um, why are not more billionaires that would open their own shit? And I'm not talking about Twitter because Twitter can be closed like this if they want. They want. Okay. So Twitter functions having uh, to ask these guys for access to us. If those guys stop his access, he cannot broadcast, you cannot access Twitter anymore, if they want. So he has to have an understanding with these guys, but he doesn't have the whole thing. You know, that, remember Parler? How Parler, uh, it's a different thing, Parler was, uh, was erased in a few hours. If you remember, gone, done, out. You couldn't access, Parler was inexistent. How? Who are those guys? Who owns all this? Um, media, or not media, the, the means of distribution. They say, no, we don't like what you say. Click and you're done. Well, I want those billionaires to have, uh, to have that kind of click on their thing, parallel. So the government, well, the government has the guns anyway, but that's a different story. I'm going to go too far. The point is here, if this guy says that, and he's not like the pinnacle of truth here or anything like that, but why do we accept uh, the status quo about media, you know, knowing that they're corrupt or lying and have agendas and a business model on this, they align with this party, with that party, with those interests? They're owned. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.